when i say bi business intelligence it's all about data so why do we do business intel what is business intelligence is every company or organization would have some raw data so it can be structured or runs now if, by looking at the raw data the organization uh, management will not be able to identify anything right so so what business intelligence is taking the data raw data and uh, create rightful insights from that data which would help the management to take rightful decisions that is we a business through business intelligence we provide them they could make decisions which would help them uh, increase their business providing the rightful information at the rightful time which would help them make rightful decisions is business intelligence okay so i and then the question comes why do we need business intelligence so as i told you in order to make help the management uh, improve their business they uh, go for business intelligence now what are all the bi need the main goal of bi is to deliver the proper information the needs would be uh, the areas where bi should more uh, concentrate is you have different set of users right and each users will have different kind of needs every users need won't be the users need Vary according to the da uh, data they have. Uh, banking data you have, so their user needs would be different. You have health, where the user need like requirements would be different. This is one of the BI needs, and then you have multiple data sources. When you do BI on some data, we never know what kind of data sources we would be using. It's not that every time data would come from a single source. Okay, you can have multiple data sources uh, that. gives you the data okay some part of data can be coming from one source and another part can come from different source and then reporting platform so consider there are a lot of reporting tools like tableau you have click view clicks and power bi and all this thing so we should be able to identify what's the best tool which help which would satisfy all the requirements of the user okay uh, if you see every user you will have such kind of constraint uh, for example uh, you can go for the uh, cost of the tool first thing a uh, user would mostly be having constraints on the cost consider the you organization is not a big one they they might not be willing to use tableau because it's very costly whereas power bi is cheap compared to most of the tools they might go for power bi Yeah, something like that. All this constraint keeping in mind, and also the user requirement, we should be able to identify what would be the best tool which would help you uh, with all the requirements of the users. Now let's see uh, on top level, base level, what would business intelligence architecture? Uh, you will have raw data, and we create insights on top of it would help the uh, users take act accordingly. If you see the image over here, the first layer will always. with the data layer now raw data this layer can have multiple data sources as i have just mentioned so if you see you have four different data sources over here so where the data is being uh, coming up so you have call center data you have supply chain data and you have web store data now all this raw data should have a single place to hold all this data from where you can create reporting on so we need a common area where you can store all this data so that is your data warehouse data warehouse is nothing but your storage of your data we pull all this raw data into a centralized source which is in a data warehouse now once you have all the data in your warehouse what we do we connect to that data source from our tool and we do business intelligence on top of it that is we analyze the data and come up with few insights that would help the user the second thing would the second layer would be business intelligence that is your tool that you are using and the analytics that you apply on top of it and the analysis you have done and creating the insights on top of it now from the bi tool output would be your graphs and reports that you have created and now you have your graphs and reports created you provide them to the user now the user takes appropriate actions based upon the insight that we provide suppose uh, consider you have sales data so based upon the location by sales he would get to understand which area is uh, having lower sales 
so that he can go and improve the sales over there. So he takes actions in such a way, the sales in that location would get improved in the ne next coming year. Okay, so maybe if you see the actions could be like uh, reallocating the resources, changing processes, okay, and eliminating unnecessary overhead and something and so on. So uh, the first question would be what is data modeling? Process that is used to analyze all the re uh, data requirements that we have and create data model which would support all the requirements that we have, okay, which would satisfy all the requirements. Okay, suppose uh, as I told you when you have raw data we never know if it is a structured data or we create a data model which would refine our, the raw data and get that in a sheet so that uh, we can use that data model create our report according to the business requirements and the data requirements we analyze the data and create a data model and put that data into that model that is something with like in a simpler word we create tables dimension tables and fact tables according to the business requirements requirements and the data analysis and put all the uh, data into related table and use that model and uh, define relationship between those tables and use that entire data model as a base to our reporting. Uh, so basically we uh, create data model in three steps, four, four steps. First one would be the requirement gathering phase where we would get the requirement how exactly the data has to be shaped what are all the attributes you have in your data and what kind of data it is all this requirement we first we would first get then the first layer would be your conceptual data model conceptual data model is it's a high level of your data database you will define just the table uh, relationship between them you have sales data the data is about sales in the first conceptual model what we do we define what should all the tables be like? Uh, what will be the dimensions? Like for a sales database, what will we have? We'll have product dimension and we'll have product related sales dimension. And then we have time is nothing but uh, in order to store your uh, sales date and all, we need a time dimension, right? When is the sales happening uh, and what is, where exactly is it happening? Like in which store? You can have multiple stores located in multiple areas, right? So in order to store this, location information where exactly the sales is happening we need another dimension which would be the store so here we define what should all the entities be and what could be the relationship between them okay now if you see every product will have sale information so there is a relationship defined between product and sales what location is the sales happening in order to identify that we have a relationship defined between the store and the sales and in order to identify what date what is the sales that's happening we have a relationship it from time to sale on a base level we define what should be the entities and what should be the relationship between them okay now once we have the conceptual model once we have the entities defined and the relationship between them next level would be your logical data model in the logical data model what we do now we have the dimensions and the relationships right but we need attributes to be defined right okay then in the logical model we define attributes of each dimension okay suppose when i say product dimension what all attributes can a product dimension have you can have product id product description and what price of it and when is it created manufacturing date what category does it belong to and if there is any subcategory then we'll have another attribute called subcategory okay so if you see in a product dimension i have product id which would specify each product different product id is to indicate it's just like primary key which would make i make you identify each product unique so that there would no confusion between each product nothing but the name of that product so we need a product description attribute for that now Suppose you have uh, something, so each product should belong to a category. Suppose if it is a food related product, then the category and within that you have a subcategory consider. Okay, so you, uh, it's a soft drink, okay? so it, the subcategory would be soft drink. You have category and category description attributes. Then we define each product would have a unit related to it. So we need another attribute to define the unit price of it. So you we create an, another attribute named unit price. Similarly, uh, for the time dimension, what are all the attributes? 
we can we can have year month and day right if necessary week so we define all that attribute in the time dimension now when it comes to store what this store dimension will have store id to identify each store in a different location uniquely then we'll have description of it and we'll have what is the location of that store you have region city state all that information stored in your store dimension when you, when it comes to sales sales is a fact where you will have measures stored on it we store what are all the total number of items sold and what is the sales amount that we acquired from that all this information would be stored in your store dimension we define the attribute accordingly in your sales dimension what's the sales happened what is the profit we gained what is the discount you have provided Okay, all these attributes would be defined in your sales table. Now, once you identify the list of attributes in each dimension, okay, we need to identify what should be the primary key of it. Primary key in the sense, a key which would uh, help you identify each entry in your data uniquely. Suppose when I say product, uh, you will have multiple products in a store. You will have each different uh, category product every store that you have. So there should be some way you uh, differentiate one product from the other one in the data. So we create a primary key. Primary key is helps you identify each product uniquely. Among the attributes that you have, identify uh, what would be the primary key. So we identify the primary keys and foreign keys at the logical database model. So now we have dimensions. We have relationship between them. Attributes of each dimension is been specified, and primary keys are also been identified in the second level. Now, what else? We have the next data. In the next level is your physical data model. When I say physical data model, this is the finalized model that you would be creating and using in the reporting. So here, what we do, we already have the attribute, but we haven't defined what kind of data that. Does that attribute? When I say suppose product ID generally would be a number type. When it comes to description, it will always be a var a text. So now in the physical data model, we define each attribute's data type and we define if there are any constraint columns to be specified. If consider one of the columns should be unique column, so we define a unique constraint for that column. Identify the data type of each attribute and define any of the constraints that has to be defined like primary key and foreign key are already been identified in logical data model now we execute them in the physical data model we define suppose if i say product id this should be the primary key you define a constraint on top of that attribute saying that should be a primary key primary keys are always non null keys so we define all these constraints in the physical data model here this would be the finalized model that would go into development and later it would, would be used in the reporting as a source in the reporting tool i'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos to look out for other related videos in our playlist for more information visit our website now keep learning with intellipat